Hi everyone, I'm Nathan Hedge, and I'm gonna be your host for this episode of Surfing Australia TV. In today's show, we check out a profile on D-Bar Boardwriters, Hyundai's air show competition down at the 2021 Boardwriters Battle Series final in Newcastle. And we hang out with Irukandji's longboard world champion, Harley Ingleby, at home in Coffs Harbour. First up today on the show, we've got Johnny Gannon, who's gonna take Ryan Hitwood and I through some surf-specific training at Surfing Australia's High Performance Centre at Casarina. Chest up, chin back, exhale, brace the belly. And again, big breath in. Exhale, brace the belly, sit back into those hamstrings, lengthen them under tension. I coach surf specific movement patterns. That's what I try to specialize in. Um, I do a lot of postural work. And then we integrate it into our workout. We sort of go around each exercise in the room, make sure you know we're breathing right. And everything we do has a carryover into surfing. Trace that right thumb all the way up, big powerful breath in. Exhale it down. Hopefully that translates into their surfing. Um, more time spent in the water, less injuries is a big one. And uh, yeah, strengthen up the body as one unit and uh, have fun. When we're training, I always jump into the session because it's a bit hard for me to stand on the side, especially for surfers. Uh, they don't like to be told what to do all the time. It's, it's better for me to jump in and do the session with them. And then it becomes a bit competitive. So, yes. Yes. So I don't have to walk around and yell and scream and motivate people. It's on you to train hard, not necessarily me to push you for each and every session. I find it works well for me. It might not work well for some, but I really enjoy that style of training. Yes, hard. Oh, thanks, thanks, brother. Always Start good, mate. Session, thanks, mate. Thanks, thanks brother. Yeah, the benefits are massive, thanks, you know, bro. having the camaraderie amongst the boys and your friends and all catching up, you know, we train and get the endorphins up. You know, celebrate and after and go and splash in the ocean, catch a few waves and just body feels amazing and then that, that flows on to a really good mental state too. So, you know, what a better way to do it. Yeah, the waves around my zone here in the Tweed Coast, is, there's a good variety. It's sort of exposed to a lot of different swells. It loves a little bit of offshore wind like most places on the East Coast, but we've got mostly some really hollow beach breaks and some like rocky points that run off and a couple of slabs. You can surf every day of the year pretty much. I've found even more so now I'm getting a little bit older that I just need my surfing more than ever now, and especially in the world now. There's so many changes and things that you know we can't be sure of, but the one thing you can be sure of is, is the ocean. It's always there for me and you know it's something that I've, I've always gone back to in my life, whether it's struggles or you know, celebrate things, I've always find myself in the ocean and you know, I just I need it like I need to breathe air. Yeah, I recently started up a cool little business here locally. I call it the Surf Lab. And it's about getting people out on, on the jet ski with me for a surf experience. Traditionally, you know, surf coaching and training has been the coach sitting on the beach filming and you go and catch X amount of waves and come in. Whereas on the ski, it happens instantly and live right there and then. And you're on another wave within 15, 20 seconds working on exactly what we just spoke about. One of the really hard things when you're surfing is is positioning and, and getting fatigued so all that's taken out of the equation because you get picked back up and then you get put back right in the sweet spot and you're on another set so it's a really accelerated learning environment you know you, you identify a wave in the ocean and then you're like yeah let's, let's go this one and you commit to it and then you go and then you, know, you come down the wave and you're watching the surfer right there going across with them and hooting and hollering and so you're kind of in the moment you share that share that wave with them and it's it's pretty unique for surfing because you're normally just on your own and and you're off so it's kind of like you are having to surf yourself. It's, it's a pretty cool experience. Welcome back to Surfing Australia TV. In May this year, we had the Australian final of the Board Otters Battle in Newcastle. Hyundai hosted an electric air exhibition where electric cars are up for grabs. Let's check it out. 
24 of Australia's best board rider club aerial specialists took to the skies for their chance to win themselves a Hyundai Kona electric vehicle for a year. The task wasn't easy, with a giant blimp hovering above the lineup, dangling a key just out of reach of surfers. Not only did they have to perform an air with a clean landing, but they also had to grab the key mid manoeuvre to take home the win. It was amazing to work with Surfing Australia in an ocean and developing the idea and to see it come to life with all the kids out there. Jumping for the key was amazing. It's a new format with the blimp. It's kind of hard with the wind and all the variables, but yeah, it's, it's a cool format. A lot of people are you know, quite shocked to see something so crazy, I guess, here in the surf industry. And yeah, it's really awesome to have it as a part of our event to here today. Unfortunately, nobody came home with a win on the day, but those that came the closest were given the opportunity to attend a specialist aerial camp at the HPC, thanks to Hyundai, as a reward for their efforts. Now before the break, we're gonna go fly on the wall with d Board Riders Club, as they aim for national final qualification at this year's Queensland State Round of the Hyundai Australian Board Riders Battle Series. We got the Queensland qualifier for the Australian Board Riders Battle. We've got 15 teams for, throughout Queensland, predominantly from Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast. We're here at Talabudra Surf Club. We've got some great little peaks. It's been a great morning of surf so far. It's crazy how consistently good everybody is. Normally there's one or two teams that are standing out, but it seems like today is going to be a real battle. Well, d Bart Border Riders, we, were, we officiated in 2008. A uh, whole core group of guys from the whole Coolangatta Tweed region, where we were prior members of Kira Surf Riders and Snapper Board Riders. And at the moment, we've got guys like Callum Robson that are looking down at the barrel of the Challenger Series of the WSL, and guys like Brent Zorrington that have been doing the QS for, for years and years, and really good local guys, Nick Vasacek, who also do, does the QS and will stand out anywhere in the world wherever they go. Just unfortunately with the COVID-19 guidelines, a lot of our guys, they all reside in New South Wales, so unfortunately they couldn't be here today. They're here in spirit and we're really looking forward to knocking up with our replacement team. Yeah, I love representing Diva. It's such a laid back, fun club. Everyone wants to win, but you know, at the end of the day, it's all about fun. So yeah, we're just down here for a good time. Yeah, Harry, Harry ripped it. Bit of hassling there from the young girl as well, which was sick to see. I was, I was pretty stoked when I saw him go straight up the inside of some bloke and just power into one, but yeah, I'm stoked that Harry's uh, surfing for us. Oh, I was pretty nerve-wracking, but got it done, so did the job. It's going to take a lot to go to the semi, so it'll be pretty good. Yeah, win and see is pretty good club, same with Kira, so yeah. Yeah, unfortunately our run here at uh, the Queensland Qualifiers has come to an end in the semi-final, uh, beaten by two really strong teams in, in Burley and Warshaw. Wish all the competitors in the, in the final good luck. Uh, it's been a great day, some really high quality surfing and uh, hope to see you in Newcastle everyone. After the break, we're going to hang out with Hiro Kanji, Australian surfing, twice world longboard champion, Harley Ingleby. In the world of professional surfing, we've got such a variety of cool disciplines. We've got the shortboarders, we've got longboarders, we've got free surfers and all kinds of crazy equipment. There's not many who can ride them all, as well as Irukandji's Australian surfing team legend and two times world longboard champion, Harley Ingleby. We tracked Harley down at his hometown of Coffs Harbour to show you just how good this guy is on any craft he chooses. Check it out. Down here with a coffee 
about sunrise, um, especially if I know there's going to be a bit of swell. Looks like we've got some this morning, so should find a wave. A few good ones on the point here the other past week. Yeah, when we get swell, today's got a bit of east in it, which is nice. Um, yeah, like I think one of the strengths of, strengths of this area is we have so many headlands and beaches that face slightly different directions. So yeah, there's always plenty of options. In the morning like this, open, the open back beach is usually pretty good. So a little bit, a little bit raw and maxed out here still from the subly, but there'll be some other spots that should be a bit more, a bit more settled in. Probably be silly to chase it too far today, but that looks fun. A bit inconsistent, but it's a wave. Yeah, that's my little 510 quad fish. It's got the dimensions written on it. Secret, this one. But you've still got plenty of planing area there, and your whip. It's pretty fun in any way, it's really this board. I'll take my long board down as well. This is my HIHP, which is um, sort of my favourite all round, a good way board, long board. The board I won both my world titles on, um, the same model. And um, yeah, it's a bit more forward wide point, pulled in, lights a barrel. <laughs> it's good to chase, chase long peaky beach breaks like this. It's always. Um, I'm just seeing more than you're getting, but usually if I paddle, take this out, you can hunt them down pretty good, so give it a go. off yeah any day sort of roll into a couple of little barrels it's always fun so get some uh, food and a coffee and check in with the wife make sure she hasn't had the baby I'm expecting any day I don't know I think anyone's ever fully ready to, <laughs> to have a kid but um you know, we've got mum and dad just around the corner and Gina and I both work from home so yeah it's gonna be good We're really gonna sort of make the most of you know raising a little one <laughs> Dad started collecting when I was uh, one or two years old. This old Gordon Woods here, it's all pulled apart and about to go on a fire. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously couldn't let that happen. A bit of surf history, so swapped it for a bunch of firewood. And yeah, after that, just set out to get one of everything through the history of surfing, just to preserve it. Everything's got a history in our sport. At that stage, no one was really paying a great deal of attention to the history of our sport. So I thought, that's nah, something to do, I'll do it. I've never counted them in the house, but apparently Linda has, and she reckons there's over 100 in the house, and it's kind of the tip of the iceberg. There's stuff stuffed in little nooks and crannies all over the place as well. It's, I used the theory that women use on their wardrobe, mate. If you've got a lot of it, you can sneak another one in and they don't notice until it's too late. <laughs> I think the oldest board in the collections, probably maybe 1930s, something like that, 30s or 40s, really old. It's pretty heavy. I can barely pick it up. <laughs> Apparently she used to carry it quite a distance to the beach, so she must have been a uh, pretty incredible woman. <laughs> Surfing back in those days and lugging this thing to the beach. When he was little he'd be, you know, fantasizing about which one he was gonna ride first and all that. And 
he'd get them out and you know, have a crack, crack at them and he sort of learnt that um, you have to modify your, your style to, to suit your equipment. I think that went a long way to making him the kind of surfer that he is, really versatile. You know, you don't have to be the, the hard-nosed pro to make money out of it. You can be just a good guy who surfs well and put something back into the industry and I think that's what Harley's doing. Yeah, this was my first ever surfboard. Dad shaped out of two snap shorties. It's a little 5.6 soft rail single fin. And then, yeah, and then my second board, it's that green male up there. It's another soft rail single fin, but it's a seven footer. Good to learn on, learn on a single fin. It sort of made me learn how to use my rail rather than just sort of stand back and plane and surf off the fins. I think it sort of instilled some good, good habits from the, from the beginning. I used to ride this one a lot when I was a Grom. Kind of outgrew it though. <laughs> it's made by Richie West, legendary shaper from this area. What else I used to ride a lot? Bertelman Twin, the Carabine Bonza. When the waves were fun, it was still a bit hollower. Found that to be a really, really good, good board in like hollow waves, chasing peaks. Just heaps of meat under the chest, paddled really well. I think um, having this collection of boards at my disposal, I don't know, I guess I had a, a more of an open mind than most kids my age. Sort of just make the most of the conditions and it's sort of fun to be had on all kinds of different craft. And the fact that you know, I ended up winning a couple of world longboard titles, I think it was just, yeah, I, I guess when I started chasing the longboard thing more professionally, it was just, I was really enjoying the crew and it was just fun travel and not too, not too full on and not much ego. It was just a good bunch of dudes traveling the world having fun. and. Yeah, I just really resonated with that and the sort of the results and all that sort of stuff was secondary at the start. And, but yeah, very thankful to end up where I, where I have. <laughs> After the break, we take you back up the coast to an aerial training camp at Surfing Australia's High Performance Centre, brought to you by Hyundai. Welcome back to Surfing Australia TV. After showing their skills at the Hyundai Electric Air Exhibition, a few lucky Groms got to attend an aerial training camp at the High Performance Centre. Let's check it out. The air exhibition down the ABV was really fun. I got to surf with a lot of mates, trying to do an air and grab the key. Yeah, that was really cool. It was super innovative. It was something different. It really separated from like the whole kind of nudie board riders battle and it gave like almost like the audience for something else to watch. Because no one grabbed the key, um, the consolation was we got an air camp up here. I'm most excited about just having fun and trying some really big airs. This morning we're getting a bit of a warm up. It's a pretty cold day here, winter time up at the centre. Um, just running them through a bit of activation, um, some rotation, just getting their body and their mind sort of ready for a little ski session we're about to do this morning. What I'm hoping to see these kids achieve by the end of this air camp, trying to get them confident in actually throwing down some bigger manoeuvres and, and not being afraid to do those sort of earlier in, in the competitive side of the stuff that they're doing, but um, but also push their progression as well as they grow. We've got some straps there, like for, on a couple of the boards, so it gives the kids an opportunity to go for manoeuvres that are unheard of, so to speak, so some big flips or some 540 spins. It's my first time. I only did it yesterday, but hopefully I can learn something big on it today. You? I think it's important to just to learn what it feels like to spin and to have that aerial awareness as well. So yeah, the purpose of the ski is just to give them quick succession. So you know, you go for one air reverse day, make it, get them straight into another one. And we saw that yesterday in, um, in the morning sessions with Geordie. You know, he did, did three in a row, and one of them was a really big full rotation. So I think it's important. It's uh, Good way to get all the kids out, having fun, supporting each other too, so it's good. The way that today's going to work is Raph's going to be out there setting the boys up into the right section. I'll be filming them from the beach, trying to make sure we're getting that front side view so that they can come in in between their sessions, kind of have a little bit of a look back at what they're doing, what they can improve for when they head back out there. Yeah, having a jet ski out there just changes the whole game. You get to practice every wave pretty much because um, you have so much speed on the wave, it allows you to be able to do any sort of air. 
I want to improve on my air game, trying to do backflips and some full roads. Yeah, I just want to work on that so when I get into a comp, I can be better than everyone else. So Huey's been really trying to push his height in his airs today and he went out there a little bit earlier and almost stuck a few. He came in, had a little bit of a look at you know what he could do to improve. And we come up with just trying to spot that rotation a little bit earlier. And he went back out there and he landed a pretty sick air rev. He was pretty frothing about it, you'll see. <laughs> he claimed it, we all claimed it for him. <laughs> Next up, it's time for Woolworths State Grom titles, held at Drambar Beach on the Gold Coast. Hi, my name's Hunter Anderson, and I surf for Wind and Sea Board Riders, and I'm 11 years old. I started surfing when I was six years old, but at seven, I wanted to start really do competitive surfing. To be able to surf in this comp today, I had to do a lot of training and put in a lot of time and my, and my effort to surf in this competition. It'd be good if I could take this one out because then I could move on to the national finals. Well, that's it for this episode of Surfing Australia TV. I'm Nathan the Hog Hedge. Thanks for having me on the show.